Hello, welcome to Coffee and Jesus at Abundant Life Homestead. Before we begin, need to say that uh, we really had ourselves worked up about going live next week. That's probably not going to happen, at least in the beginning of the week. We uh, we didn't we thought we had a internet connection better than we did, and we kind of got into a struggle with the ISP today. And long story short, we're going to end up with a different provider very shortly. So not going to happen Tuesday, but it may be done by the end of the week. We'll see. So let's get into today's Connection Bible Study. We still will, will have the recorded oh, episodes. Yes. Oh, yes. We're, we're going to, can, we've been recording every day for two weeks. We haven't put them online, but we will be putting them online. So there will still be the Bible study every day the way we wanted it. It just won't be live. So the Bible study follows the Revised Common Lectionary, and on Friday we look at um, all of the passages throughout the week and see what the connection between them are. So um, we are starting with Matthew 13, 1 through 9, and 18 through 23. That was Monday's reading. Yes, Monday. This is the Gospel passage. And in this passage, we had the parable of the sower, which is the farmer sowing seeds that fall on the different types of ground, which represent um, our different mindsets and um, as far as the kingdom of God and how it falls on us, whether we take it in or let it be taken away from us and we continue on. So, what, what did you get out of that? Um, this it also started with Jesus um, preaching um, outside of outside in the open air, and he had to get on a boat because the crowd was so large. So I have that the people are hungry for the truth, and it is what we do with the truth with that truth that matters. You want to go back and forth? No, you can okay. Also, by receiving the message and embracing it, it changes our lives. And then the life we live can be an example of God's love to the world. And that is the harvest we are looking and striving for. And what did you get? So I, I took the parable that Jesus gave. And mm -hmm. instead of facing it outwards like you have these four different types of people and how they act when they receive God's word, I turned it inward because I think if we're honest, every one of us goes through these four scenarios at different times in our lives. So when we're presented with God's word, we should strive to understand it because what was thrown by the roadside was not understood and quickly snatched away. We should endure it. What was in the in the rocks grew quickly, like the the Christians that are on fire and then mm -hmm. suddenly burn out. No, we we should be it. We should be in it for the long run, not be distracted from it. The seed that was thrown onto the thorny soil, the the thorns were the the distractions and desires, the fleshly things of the world that pulled it away, choked it, and kept it from kept it from bearing fruit. We should not be distracted from the word, and then we should bear fruit through it. The good soil, mm -hmm. deeply rooted good plants, bore a lot of fruit. He said uh, some hundred times, some sixty times, some thirty, and even that little bit, you know, the fruit that we bear, it's not always the most amazing thing in the world. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes it's there's just a little fruit that comes out of it, mm -hmm. but it's good, still good fruit, and sometimes it's bushels and bushels. So then on Tuesday, we read Romans 8, 1 through 11. This was, in many ways, Paul's answer to Romans 7, where he was deeply conflicted between flesh and spirit. Um, so in, in Romans 8, he, he was a little, a little lighter about it. He, he wasn't so dark about it. There's a lot more hope. 
a lot more hope in Romans 8, a lot less doubt in Romans 8 than in Romans 7. And I pulled just a couple quick little things out of it. Um, we cannot be condemned because we are the body of Christ and he cannot be condemned. And then uh, the, the big idea out of this one I got was the law of the flesh can only point to our sins and therefore fails. Only Jesus can defeat sin and fulfill the law and fulfill it in us if we live according to the Spirit. And also closer to the end, all those who are in Christ are Spirit-filled. See, I have the law and all of God's requirements are fulfilled with the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the conflict of our sin nature and spiritual nature. And Jesus lives in us. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live a holy life, not one ruled by sin. So, well, we anything, don't... anything to talk about there before oh, we move on? Because we're... We're kind of hammering through this. Because I'm tired. <laughs> well, and it's um, also connection. It's, it's hard not to. Yeah, and I mean, Romans 8, it's, gonna, it's spread out over three weeks. So we're going to be touching a lot on Romans 8 throughout the next couple of weeks. Um, but I don't have anything else. All right. Move on to Wednesday. Wednesday is the Old Testament and Genesis 25, 19 to 43. 34. Oh my gosh, 1934. <laughs> um, this is, I dropped my paper. Um, a continuation of the line oh. of Abraham oh, yeah. um, with Isaac and uh, Rebecca. And um, Rebecca was unable to have children. So Isaac cried out to God on her behalf, and she became pregnant with twins, Jacob and Esau, who actually fought in her womb. And um, when she cried out to God, he told her that these were two nations fighting in her womb. And um, we go on that Esau was born first, very hairy. And Jacob was born second, holding on to the heel of Esau. Um, and that is foreshadowing for his character and what is to continue on. He is um, a deceiver, a bit deceptive in his human nature. And um, we talked about how God still uses him even he makes good of what others would consider a flaw. That's oh, that was, was that a grand point? summation. <laughs> no, that oh, was just okay. my summation. I, I didn't think you threw your points in there. Just... Um, my first one was the importance of praying for others. We saw that Isaac prayed for Rebecca, and God answered her prayer his prayer though not right away it did take a little bit of time he was 40 when um, they were wed and 60 when the boys were born so sometimes it can take a long period of persistent prayer and faith for our desires to fall in line with God's will you know we don't even want to speculate on what Jacob and Rebecca were going through mm -hmm. when they were 40 but you know in our own lives how often do you wait for a long time for a prayer to be answered and you look back and the prayer that you wanted to be answered and was answered wasn't exactly the prayer you were praying for in the beginning mm -hmm. you still had some molding and evolving to do bring that up into God's will and sometimes you know I think that's why God, mm -hmm. God, wait, God waits to answer because He's waiting for us to come in line with his will. Mm -hmm. He had already willed, you know, when Jacob and Esau was going to be born and everything. But And then once again, um, Rebecca, when these boys were fighting in her womb, she cried out to God once again to figure out you know, what's going on. This is crazy. <laughs> I, I can't handle this. Tell me what to do. And... 
God's like, you got some crazy boys in your belly. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. But um, then I went on with um, the story of Jacob and Esau. They, when Esau came back from hunting, he was absolutely famished. And Jacob was making a soup. And Esau asked him for some soup. And Jacob said that he would give him soup, but he had to give him his birthright first. And Esau was starving, so he didn't care. He's like, whatever, just give me soup. And so I wrote down that it's our nature to force someone to give up something important before we will help them. And that's the sin nature Whereas a spiritual nature is to just give. You don't need to have that sacrifice or payment to do something. You just do it out of love. Yes. And did you want to add to it before I get it? Um, I'm not necessarily on that point. Okay. I think you made your point. <laughs> and, um... With that point, God gave more than what was asked, not the bare minimum. And that's a trait that we see throughout the Bible. God doesn't give us the bare minimum. He exceeds our expectations. And I, mean, I had to, again, go into God with our questions, which was what Rebecca did. And, and the, the one thing I'd add to that, because it'll help lead into the big point I made on this, you know, the whole thing with the birthright, it, you know, I mentioned the other day, we think of a birthright as the money and stuff. Mm -hmm. But back then, yeah, the money and stuff was there, but the birthright was a very spiritual thing. You became the spiritual leader of family. You became the one that could go before the Lord. And also in that, um, Jacob being a still man, he was a very spiritual man and Esau being the one out in the wilderness doing the hunting he was a very fleshly man and so God's will and wisdom surpassed anything we could ever understand he knew before they were born that even though Jacob used a trick of the flesh Jacob would desire spiritual nature over flesh and Esau flesh nature over spirit and knowing that that would be the nature of each of those two is why you know he kind of had this whole thing set up for Jacob to be to get the birthright mm -hmm. because he knew Jacob would be the spiritual child and this one I there's a lot of foreshadowing in this one as well I mean if you've read ahead <laughs> ja well, Jacob is one of my favorite stories um your Joseph the story of Joseph and that's just a little further down the family line and there's a lot of deception there with his brothers and so it just kind of the deception kind of continues through that line and it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that ties in later okay anything else from our genesis I don't think so. I know so so many people are eager to give up on the Old Testament. I say it's unimportant, and um, that we should only focus on the New Testament. But I think it's important to go back to the Old Testament, and because there's so much that has happened that leads into when Jesus comes, and most of this would have been understood at that time. These stories are all known when Jesus hmm. came. And there, there's so many things in in the New Testament that when we study, we can go back and mm -hmm. see, like, this week's big idea. We can, using the Old Testament, and mm -hmm. gives us a, you know, better grasp on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, okay, so we've got it in... We, we've got it in Matthew, and in Romans, and in Genesis, and in Psalms. And you you add it all together, and there's many many things like that where you can go back from the New Testament to the Old Testament, pick up a different. 
either a different or a better understanding and bring it back to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then Thursday, we read Psalm 119, 105 through 112. This psalm is uh, short enough that I think instead of sitting here talking about it, I'm just going to read it again. Okay. It's only a few verses. And it, it's a good one. It's one that the, the verse 105 gets quoted a lot, especially on like coffee mugs and signs. And So in 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn an oath and have confirmed it that I will keep your righteous ordinances. I am greatly afflicted. Renew and revive me, giving me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept and take pleasure in the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I do not wander from your precepts. You have taken your testimonies as I have taken your testimonies as a heritage forever. For they are the joy of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. And I just noticed something as I read it this morning that I don't think we ever even brought up. It says, I have sworn and confirmed. So it's like he's doubly emphasizing, mm -hmm. I will keep your ordinances. Mm -hmm. Where probably, it's probably closer to, I'm going to do my best <laughs> to keep your ordinances. But he didn't just swear it. He didn't just confirm it. I've sworn and confirmed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so the notes I have from that. Um, we can wander through life without God's word. And I, I said that this morning and I realized this afternoon. It does, I'm not saying we can make it to heaven without God's word. We can, we can, in the flesh, wander through this life until death without God's word. And that is being in the in the flesh or in this flesh spirit. I just wanted to clarify that a little bit because it hit me this afternoon. I was like, I just said we could wander through life and make it without God's word. Well, the only, we can make it to death without God's word is where I was going with that. But with God's word or being in the spirit, we can see what we're and understand what we're stepping into. The word is light. It is easy to understand by all who try to understand it. It's not it's not darkness. It's not encased in shadow. It's not hidden. Yeah, we can get de theologically deep, but even young Christians can read the Bible and understand it. That's the way God meant meant for his word to be. It it, it, it is light. It, it's not in the darkness whatsoever. What what you got anything on that? You got well, I mean, I've got the, the later, but... Um, and God's Word is our guide through life. So, He's constantly guiding us. And even just with His Word, I mean, the Holy Spirit is there to definitely guide us and prod us. But even just in the Word, we can see His guide, guiding Okay, and so while I was taking notes on this, I, I, I picked up two more of the conflict between flesh and spirit, or flesh nature and spirit nature. Um, 107 and 108 is one of those saying, I'm greatly afflicted, I'm afflicted in my flesh, mm -hmm. renew and revive me, give me life, you know, the, the, the life is of the flesh, according to your word, and then... So 108, accept and take pleasure in the free will offerings of my mouth. You know, we kind of stress of my mouth during the thing. We spent a morning. long time on 107 and 108. Yeah. But the, the offerings, you know, mm -hmm. my free will offerings to God, that, that's of a spiritual nature. So there we have our, our conflict between flesh and spirit. And then we get into 109 and it starts back over with mm -hmm. another conflict of flesh and spirit. My life is continuously in danger, continuously in my hand. And I do not forget your law. And we know the law mm -hmm. is of the flesh. And 
Then 110, the wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I do not wander from your precepts. The wicked being spiritually bad people and the spiritual precepts of God are what he has taught us. You know, the Passion Translation said the ungodly. The, the Passion Translation turned this like one two minute read into yeah. like 12. Yeah, not but, quite that much. Well, but it, got, it goes. It really did expand it. Yeah, that's why we didn't spend <clears throat> as much time on because it was so clear with the passion translation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got the conflict of sin nature and spiritual nature, and um, we're striving to follow God's way because we know that is the best, the only way. God's way is perfect, and we fall short. And now we're falling fast. <laughs> we thought we was going to run out of time. We're 21 minutes in. <laughs> okay, so that was that was the whole week in 20 minutes. And on Fridays, what what we do is see if we can find a connection between all of those verses. Um, I wrote out a whole preachimony about this one, but. Uh, the first sentence really holds it all in. For as long as we live, we will always experience the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And only by bearing fruit, bear, only by bearing spiritual fruits, do we understand it. And only Christ can defeat it. Defeat it. And um, the connection this week was the conflict between the sin nature and spiritual nature. We strive to do what is right, but only through Jesus can we overcome our sin nature. Mm -hmm. So we, we caught on pretty early Yeah. what the connection was going to be. P pretty early in the week, the, the struggle between the sin nature and the spiritual nature was really making a run for it. Um, close this out. We'll continue oh. next week. Um, we'll be in... Thank you, Ruth. Thing to hold up. Oh, that's this week. I'm looking at this week again. Next, I didn't. next week. <laughs> I was looking. Monday on Monday, July 17th, we will be in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. That's just the continuation from where we were <clears> this <throat> week. So, so what connections did you find? Put it down in the comments. Um, Include any mm. prayer requests as well. Thank you. And we'll see um, what the, if you can come up with something different than we did. We'd yeah. love to hear it. Yeah. I'm sure there will be a lot of differences. And that's okay. That's how it's meant to be with the Connections Bible Study. Mm -hmm. We kind of got blinders on once we saw the yeah. sin nature and yeah. Yeah. spiritual we, nature. We, we, so um, By Tuesday, we stuck with the whole sin and spirit. But if you have any prayer requests, add those, and we're going to pray right now. Pray for Zoe. Okay. Father, we thank you for your word and um, the connections we had this week. And help us to choose the spiritual nature rather than our sin nature. We ask that you be with Zoe and her stomach issues. Let them find an answer for her and give her healing and peace and just help her to overcome this illness with your healing touch and also be with the kids at camp and touch them and let them have a wonderful experience this week and we ask this in jesus name amen amen okay well we thank you all for joining us um hope you stay with us through every weekday and from Abundant Life Homestead, we hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.